What up, BestNet TV? It's your boy John Nomondo again, and yo, we're back here with part two of the first video for languages to learn. So the first part was easiest languages to learn. Now this is gonna be medium level languages to learn, like not too hard, not too easy. But you know, stay tuned for the next part. I'm gonna drop that very soon as well. So if you guys haven't seen the first part, make sure you guys check that out first. And you know, if you guys are new, you know, make sure you have to subscribe. Look at all the other videos on the channel. And all that stuff, but I'm not gonna waste your time. So, number one language for this list in terms of the medium languages to learn is German. Now, German is a level two language, so it'll take roughly uh, 750 hours in order to reach proficiency in German. Now, Germany Germany has a very unique history. You know, we all know about um World War, all the World Wars, World War One and Two, and about how Germany was back then, but. Germany is a very different place right now. You know, it's very diverse, you know, very, very fun place to go from what I've heard. I've got a lot of family that lives over in Germany, you know, and it's actually a relatively similar language to English. Yeah, if you've listened very closely, it's, it's kind of a little bit like Dutch. Like it's a little like Dutch, but like a lot of Dutch people tell me that uh, it's similar, but it's really hard to like understand between the two. You know, if you speak Dutch, and a lot of times it's difficult to understand German, but still, it's a very similar language to, to English. You know, it's part of that same language family. So yeah, if you guys want to start learning German, it's actually the third most taught language in American schools. So, which is really interesting. And I'll, actually it turns, it turns out that like a lot of Americans, I forget what percent, but a lot of them can trace their ancestry back to Germany. So that's just really interesting as well. Now, number two on this list is uh, Swahili. Now, Swahili is a category three language, which means it'll take roughly 900 hours to reach proficiency in Swahili. So, Swahili is a language from the Niger-Congo family, language family, and it's actually one of the most spoken languages in Africa. Like, I think as of right now, they can trace that five to 15 million people are native speakers in Swahili, whereas there's also a lot of people in Africa who speak Swahili as a, as a third or second language. For example, you know, all over East Africa, Central Africa, and Southern Africa. There's a lot of Swahili speakers, whether it's in, Ken in Kenya, Mozambique, the Congo, or even in Somalia. Like a lot of people all over Africa speak the language. Now, it's got a lot of uh, early roots in um, Arabic as well when it comes to the writing system, but the writing system nowadays tends to be more leaning towards the Latin writing system. So Swahili is actually a language that I'm planning on learning after I've gone through the first five languages that I'm learning. So I'm actually really looking forward to that. And I'd recommend if any of you guys are interested in traveling to Africa, then that you guys learn that language as well, because that's really, it's a really interesting language, you know, the way it sounds, you know, all, all of that stuff. So, and it has a really interesting history to it. Now, number three on the list is gonna be Tagalog. So if you guys don't know what Tagalog is, it's actually the language spoken in the Philippines, the main language spoken there. And, you know, for me personally, I have a lot of Filipino friends. It's actually interesting because a lot of them don't speak Tagalog as well, but that's also one on the list. It's also a level category three language, so which takes approximately 900 hours to learn as well. So yeah, it's the Philippines actually, the roots of that language are a lot of the roots come from Spanish because the Spanish came a long time ago and took over the Philippines. That's about before, you know, the Japanese and American came, blah, 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 that whole mess. But it's interesting because a lot of people who live in the Philippines speak English, you know, around the bigger cities as a second language. And they actually speak English really well compared to other countries in Asia. So, which is interesting. And if you're looking at the Philippines as a travel destination, I believe it has over like 6,000 islands, some, something over that. So, there you but I definitely recommend, you know, if you're going to like more of the rural areas to like probably learn Tagalog like a little bit, just so enough so you can get around and yeah. All right, so number four on the list is um, Russian. Russian, it's it's a quite an interest, interesting language, yes. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad accent, but now Russian is a very popular language. Uh, it's actually from uh, the Slavic group, but it has roots in uh, the, the Indo-European language family as well. And um, I don't know if you guys know about the USSR, but back in 1991, when the USSR disbanded, a lot of the different states in the USSR decided that they they rejected Russian and they wanted to speak their own languages. Although there were still a lot of Russian settlers that came to all those countries and relocated there, so there's still a large, 
Russian-speaking population in countries in Eastern Eastern Europe, even though they reject Russia as it is, whether that's um, in Belarus, whether that's Ukraine, that's many different countries. Also countries like in the, the stands, like uh, Uzbekistan, uh, those countries, I don't even know how to pronounce it, I don't know, I'm sorry. If you guys are from there, <laughs> my bad, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you know, those, those stands near Russia that were part of the USSR, a lot of those countries still speak Russian as well. Now, I believe Russian has over uh, 200 million speakers worldwide, and I think it's about 114 million that claim it as their native language, which is really interesting because uh, Russia is a really big territory, but it doesn't really have as many people compared to that territory. Now, next on the list, and last but not least, uh, it's always languages that I'm like learning or that I've tried out. And, you know, so, <laughs> so next on the list is Vietnamese. Now, Vietnamese is part of the, I believe it's called the Austro-Asiatic, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong, right or wrong, language, but it's also a branch off of the Hmong Khmer language branch, which is also with uh, languages like Cambodia and other e Southeast Asian countries. Now, Vietnamese, like I believe until 1975, uh, Vietnamese was still separated, but like once Vietnam, Vietnam came back together, you know, they realized that there was a, a northern and a southern accent, and there's also a an accent that was formed in the middle, which is called, I believe it's called Ting uh, Chung Tam, like that, which means a center or central in Vietnamese. And I, apparently that's the most difficult dialect to learn because I, I've, I've actually run into people at work who speak that and I didn't understand anything they were saying. And even the southerners don't understand what they say half the time, which is interesting. So Vietnamese is another one of those level three languages, which takes roughly 900 hours to learn. And, um, yeah, and you guys already know a lot of history about Vietnam, you know, the Vietnam War, all that stuff. You know, it was... But Vietnam is a very different place right now. It's actually one of the cheapest destinations to go to in Asia, you know, as well as, you know, the people are the most friendly. Although not a lot of people speak English there, depending on where you go, and especially if you're in the rural areas. And even in the, the cities, like, a lot of people don't really speak English, whether it's... If they do, it's really basic. So I recommend you guys learn enough to, you know, be able to make basic transactions and things like that so yeah that's that's it for this video and excuse me you know make sure you guys tune in for the next video which is going to be the most difficult languages to learn so make sure you guys are looking out for that you know like the video if you guys enjoyed it you know subscribe all that stuff.